So here's my pack that I carried in. This is the VanQuest Markor 45. It's uh, a little bit undersized for what I typically need. So you can see I have all sorts of stuff bolted on here. And then on the bottom of the pack, basically this has some uh, lashing points, some molly on the bottom, and I used it to carry the tent. Now, this tent is a little wider um, than I'm used to. So my profile was a bit wider uh, than I typically like. And unfortunately, coming in, I did snag this on one branch and it was enough to rip the bag. So um, unfortunately, the bag is um, a little bit thin and it's not the bag's fault, it's my fault um, for getting snagged. And I'm hoping there's no damage to the tent. Uh, but my initial impression here is that I didn't snag it deep enough to really catch the tent. And if you look here, there was a little loose material that kind of was what got caught. But at this point, I'm gonna set this up and uh, I have myself a very nice sight. So if you look here, a beautiful, beautiful flat spot after about five miles and um, pretty decent hiking. I'm not gonna say it was grueling, but uh, five miles of hiking. Uh, we have this nice flat spot here. Uh, fire pit, which we're not gonna use because there's another fire pit where we're not gonna burn our stuff down. Uh, but most importantly, check out this view. And the kids <laughs> yelling and enjoying themselves. So this is going to be fun. Nice uh, boys weekend. My buddy out there doing a little reconnaissance. Let's check in on him. What's he got going on? Perfect mirror image view here. It's nice stuff. So anyway, uh, at this point... It is time for me to get this tent set up and uh, really settle into this afternoon, but what a beautiful spot. Now just another observation on the bottom of the bag, and again, not a big deal, but you can see some little abrasions where I was setting down my pack and it was resting on this. So the bag is um, doing its job to protect the tent, but honestly, I'm not sure how long it's gonna last, uh, especially being carried on the bottom of the pack. Now on the side of my pack here, I have my buck saw. And this buck saw has a beautiful pouch that it came with. And in the pouch, there's a sleeve to carry an ax. But I chose to carry my tent poles. So you can see here that they are nicely stowed on the outside of the bag and gave me a good opportunity to carry these sorta of out of the bag that the tent came in and it took just a little bit of stress off of these so um, I think it was definitely helpful and worked out pretty well to carry my poles. Pretty nice setup here with a beautiful view. I opted to set up with my door facing the pond, so in the morning I can just kind of unzip here and look right out. So pretty nice setup overall. I'm happy with it, made it work. I uh, got the tie downs working pretty well for me and everything's nice and taut. So at this point, pretty much just gotta get it set up with my sleep system and that'll be my setup for the night. So excellent stuff, very excited about this. Now one thing that does have me just a touch concerned, I don't think the ground's really moist, but if it were to rain, this does not have a footprint. So I'm wondering if any moisture will come through here. I feel as though it's pretty overall durable and feels pretty thick, but I'm hoping I'm not gonna find myself getting wet, especially if it rains. It does call for just a little bit of rain here, but um, this is a nice thick bathtub and uh, it feels a little bit, I'm gonna say maybe like rubbery on the inside. So hoping I'll be pretty well protected even without that footprint. Now as you can see the tent has a good quality hook on top in order for me to hang a lantern and so here I have a lantern on top and a nice illumination of light inside here and generally speaking works pretty well so I like that feature quite a bit. These are high-vis reflective tie outs and also all the little zipper pulls so everything's kind of glowing here. So what do you think, buddy? You like the tent? Yeah. You like this better than our other one? Yeah. It's got a lot of headroom, right? You could pretty much stand up. Yeah. So it's about four feet tall. Yeah, about that. So we have our head 
at the mesh end and right Is now mesh? yep we're sleeping with the vestibule and stormfly completely open what do you think does it feel comfortable in here I actually think the temperature is pretty nice, don't you? Yeah, it's a ton colder out there. Yeah, it's colder out there, but it's not too cold in here, right? It's really warm. Yeah, it is. I like to move my feet together so it gets nice and warm. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like uh, I have a blister. You think you have a blister? Yeah. Oh, do man. Do you have any band-aids? I do. Okay. We'll take care of it tomorrow. There's a little vent down there too. Look at down on the bottom. Yeah. Just a little vent. A vent for air. Yeah, to move and then up on the top. I don't really think we'll sweat. No, I don't know. I guess we'll find out, right? This would be a good test. Oh, I, I, I honestly don't think we'll sweat. All right. Is that supposed to be like a flashlight lamp? Yep. It's a lantern and a flashlight. Cool. And actually, it's a little bit heavy, but it seems to be hanging up there pretty good. All right, bud, you ready for bed? Yeah. All right, good night. Those colors, huh? It's definitely notable moisture on the inside here. I mean, a pretty good amount. So, I don't know if there's something I need to do a little bit differently here, but I mean, if you look at that, it is quite notable how much condensation is built up in here, but um, I don't know if it's because we slept with the mesh open. Uh, so, I guess. Uh, tonight I'll try something different, but certainly going to have to air this out tonight. So just to cover the um, condensation issue, there's a ton of dew on the outside of everything. It was a very foggy morning, and uh, you know everything's just covered in dew. And uh, when I come and look at my buddy's tent here, um, in reality, I mean, he has a very significant amount of moisture, and after you run your hand through, you can see how wet it is. So, um, I think in comparison, there is a significantly less amount of condensation on the inside here. And I mean, yes, you can see it, but as I run my hand down, I mean, it's it's wet. Eh, it's about the same, actually, if I had to sort of quantify it. So. 
um, you know, it's really just the fact of the conditions and, you know, how wet everything is and the wet environment we're in and then the type of, um, you know, heat, uh, you know, and how it's created moisture in general. So, um, really, I don't know if there's too much I'd be able to do about it. So, the Kruba Duo. If I had to use some words to describe this, I think the first thing I would say, it is definitely quality. Uh, looks to be extremely well made and overall very well thought out. Um, I would also say that it seems to be robust, so um, fairly sturdy and stout. And, um, you know, the way it's constructed just overall well uh, cinched down and nice and taut and just the different uh, tie-out points and things and the way that you overall can, uh, you know, really get this thing staked down to the ground. It's definitely nice and stout and sturdy. Now the other thing is, for the most part, I feel as though it has nice features, just where the ventilation is and the way they've thought out sort of the vestibule area. And for two people, I feel as though this is actually, I'm going to say, ample and abundant. Um, you know, there are other two-person tents out there that I've used that don't seem to be quite as spacious. And even if I had to bring all of my gear pretty much on the inside, I feel as though I would have no problem with that. And then certainly with this vestibule area on the outside, even though there is not a floor, um, you generally have a good amount of overall space for both the people and the gear. Now, when I woke up this morning, I made a good attempt at checking out the floor to make sure there was no moisture and I did not pick up on any moisture so at this point even though I did have some condensation on the walls which is pretty much typical I did not have any problem with moisture coming through that bathtub floor. I think one of the slight downfalls and um, you know there are other tents that are of reasonable size that are kind of heavy. Um, this is sort of in that category where it's not an extremely light or uh, small carry footprint. Basically this is a rather large package overall and is kind of heavy coming in at I believe over five pounds so certainly not a lightweight option uh, but for me and my son right now uh, it seems to be uh, overall a great option. Now there are uh, other two-person tent options that would be significantly lighter weight, uh, maybe not quite as stout and not as robust uh, if you wanted something that really had lighter fabrics, lighter poles. You know, um, these poles here are aluminum, but they're not the feather light poles. Um, there are certainly other options, but if you wanted something that's really stout and sturdy and if it was a really windy condition or maybe even uh, snowing to a certain amount, I think you would have no problem with this. Uh, so if you're looking for something that's just a little more stout and has a little more room, this is certainly a way to go. But generally speaking, the features, like I said, are ample and well thought through. Pretty much you end up with this door on the outside of the vestibule here, which has these nice little toggles. And this itself can go all the way down and seal off the front area and vestibule area. So all the zippers work overall very smooth and seem to be um, pretty well constructed. Now, of course, I'm doing it here with one hand, so it's being a little bit cumbersome for me. But if I'm careful, I can get this to zip all the way down. You do need to be a little bit careful with your stake layout in order to make it so this closes and doesn't pull. But if you notice, they did put a little bit of Velcro on the bottom to try to help with that. So if I zip this down and I'm careful and then I Velcro it here, again trying to do this with one hand, I can get it to stay. But that's kind of me and my fault and my overall stake placement. Just you need to be a little bit careful with how you stake it out. And you'll see here basically I had kind of a funny situation where the front of this ran into a rock. So I had to use the upper tie out here to kind of come down and lash through this and then make it over to the soil. So it's not really the, uh, the tent's fault. I just have a little bit of a funny geometry. But again this being just a very nice overall vestibule area where you have ample room for tons of gear. So I think if I had to use a word to describe how the inside of this fabric feels, it's kind of waxy almost. The outside is very much, you know, feels like fabric or a nylon, but the inside actually has sort of a waxy feel. And that is what I was thinking um, when I was talking about this bathtub floor when I said almost rubbery. It's actually more kind of like a waxy feel, so it's very interesting. And this is a uh, very specific fabric. 
It's actually in essence a three-part fabric uh, that was made specifically uh, to have some insulating properties. So um, this again just in terms of the overall construction and being a little bit heavier um, you know really it's the fabric itself too that has some additional weight and it's funny where this tent really does not have a rain fly. It's basically just an exterior frame and then the tent itself and everything is all sewn together in one piece so you end up with sort of your mesh screen and your front door sort of all built together and then inside just the vents and then the upper vents pretty much being the only other sort of mesh material that you have so it's not like your typical tent where you know you end up with the bug net section and then the fly section and poles being sort of all separate this is really one integral system now a feature that I do very much like, if you look at the way the zipper systems work, now I'm just basically going to do this for the net. You have a central zipper that comes down to the bottom and then zippers from the left and from the right. So it's pretty much like a triangle zipper setup and they all meet in the middle. And I found that I actually very much like that. It's simple. You're not worried about a zipper with a weird curve in it or anything like that to get snagged. These are very simple pull quickly out of the way and you can do the side ones very simple um, if you use both hands and then you know the um, central one here as I just pan up very simple gets it out of the way and then you're in so uh, from a design perspective I very much like that I like the zipper tracks and the way they were constructed that is also the same for the uh, exterior flap and door here so very similar I'm not gonna pull this down but pretty much if you wanted to sort of seal this off get yourself a little more sheltered and a little warmer inside you could zip that up too so that leaves you with a system that allows you to be very protected with the screen your exterior door and then an additional vestibule door you end up with some very good protection and the ability to really hunker down if you need to now I have not seen any rain yet and I'm curious how this would do in the rain um, we possibly might get a shower later if we do it's I don't know kind of mixed emotions on it but uh, if it rains on us, at least it'll give me a chance to test this in the rain. Um, you know, I kind of, you know, I could go either way, I guess. For the sake of the test, I want it to rain, but for the rest of everything else, I don't. Um, but anyway, now that we're in here, um, this is quite spacious. You know, getting in, it's nice and high, nice and lofty. You know, I'm six foot one, and I can sit up here, absolutely no problem. Good overall head height and a nice quality depth so a good overall depth um, again at six foot one you know sometimes things can be kind of snug for me but this is again I'm gonna say um, substantially large for a two-person tent and has plenty of room for all your stuff and uh, the people as well so overall nicely shaped and nicely designed now when you look at the fine details on the construction everything is put together very nicely Nice stitching, well done, double stitched, and it's a little hard for you to see, but they do a nice job. I don't see anything out of place, so from an overall construction standpoint, I, I think they've done a mighty nice job. And importantly, when you look at all the seams, everything has been nicely taped, so it's heat taped to minimize the amount of moisture that will make it through the seams. So they've done an excellent job on pretty much every single angle here. So even when you go up sort of all the corners, you know, you're not really going to be able to see it very well because of the light, but all the corners, this is all heat taped all the way up the entire thing, you know, down the bottom and all the places where it counts. In the corners, you have nice reinforcing, so that's well done, all taped. So perfectly done there's no heat tape like out of place it's flat and smooth just done very well the placement of the mesh pockets being on the side like this I like very much because you can basically lay on either end and have good access to the pockets so you have it on both sides you have a pocket on both the right hand side and the left hand side so generally speaking that works very very well being centered um, and again depending on which way you want your head like for me last night I slept this way had my head towards the mesh so I could get a little breeze and then in the middle of the night um, my son got cold and he flipped around so either way you go you have the advantage of basically having the pockets being in that midway 
uh, and versus being stuffed in the corners or something like that. So I found that to be very advantageous. So this tent came with all these tie outs being already fabricated onto here. So you'll see they kind of tied them on and nicely lashed together. And every single tie out on this came that way. And I've since obviously unraveled some of them. They have these sort of uh, quick tensioners here, which I'm not 100% sure the best way to use those. Um, take a little practice, but I seem to get it to work just fine for me. And um, I didn't need to use all the tie outs for this particular configuration and setup, but the nice thing is you have them if you need them. So I actually have some additional ones on these corners that I haven't even needed to use. You know, I've staked down on these uh, edges of the poles and in all the corners. So I'm already staked down. And then if you want some additional reinforcement, you have it there if you need it, but um, it's not too windy and it's a kind of a mild day here. So like I said, I didn't really need that, but just overall nice presentation, well put together, well delivered and pretty impressive. And something like I said, I very much like it. Now the tent came with all the stakes you need, so you'll see not only enough to deal with all the corners, but also each and every tie out that comes assembled on here. So a good number of stakes, I want to say there's close to 10 of them total that come with this. Uh, so in essence, you do have the ability to stake this down in numerous locations on all the tie outs and all the corners. Now taking a look at this vent configuration, pretty straightforward, just a little bit of Velcro here and this can tuck inside and get out of the way and then that can go down if you need it to. But for me, I do like to have the ventilation, try to cut down on moisture and keep just a little bit of airflow through there. These little pop-up vents work mighty nice. And just taking a look at that small rear vent here, you'll see up underneath you do end up with that mesh. Uh, but here, pretty much just using a tie out and a stake to hold that open. Now you'll see that on the Crua Duo, they opt for sort of a hybrid. Now a lot of newer tents kind of got away from this sleeve system, but where this does not have a separate fly from the actual mesh section of the tent, uh, they opted to basically use a hybrid where you do have these clips to kind of hold the tent out and on here, and then you sort of uh, index that in that little grommet down there, and it goes up and through these sleeves to the other side. And so that is sort of something where uh, it's not not the most conventional way these days. I feel like that's more of a design that was used substantially on earlier generation tents and a lot of companies have gone away from that but really it is that design that gives this the unique sort of um, uh, look and shape and uh, features that you don't get on tents these days. That real high sloping sidewall uh, that gives you all that headroom and then ultimately the fact that again you do not have a separate rain fly from the mesh it is really that part of the system that allows for that. Now I'm not completely certain but I think I figured out the fact that the velcro across the front of this is so that when you use this duo as part of a larger system with the um, rest of the crew of tents this is kind of like a modular system where you can connect this up with other crew of components. Uh, I think that's pretty much to help sort of lock this in place on the other tent to keep this fabric managed um, and at bay while it's docked against the other tents. So tonight we are going to sleep with the uh, overall door closed and the vestibule. And I feel as though already it is significantly warmer. What do you think? Does it feel a little better tonight? You think it'll be a little warmer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll see. Still have the vents open on the bottom and then on the top for some air movement, but overall I think we are in for a little bit of a warmer night's sleep and I'm curious about the condensation. So right now this has pretty well dried out throughout the day. Nothing really built up so no um, condensation quite yet. So anyway we'll see what it's like in the morning. So you ready for bed? You're already like zonking out. So anyway that's it for tonight. I think the only spot where we have any water Yeah, there's some in this corner that made it in. And I'm not sure how. But it's not much. It's just like a drop. And that's not bad. This is dry in this corner. I think everything else is dry, right? Yeah. That feels 
moist. Yeah, that's this is moistish, but that's condensation on the inside. All that water is outside of the tent. So I think we're pretty much dry in here, except for a little condensation and then this tiny little bit in the corner, which I'm not sure how that made in, but let's investigate it from the outside. Waking up to a crappy day is crappy. I hate breaking down on a crappy day. But at least I got this nice little vestibule here to hang out. So this is kind of what I was talking about. Just having the ability to sit here and be reasonably comfortable. So at least I'm not getting wet. And I got a place to kind of do my thing. Cooked under here this morning, which was nice. Probably should have showed that, but you get the idea. And uh, yeah, everything's dry. No water inside. Just this one little corner, which I'm not even sure how that made it in. But it wasn't even much. It was just a tiny little bit. So, I don't know if there's a little weakness here. Just the way this all comes together, or if I had something a little bit wrong. But just a tiny little water here, but not a big deal. And uh, condensation-wise... Uh, a little less than yesterday actually so I don't know if that's a factor of the temperature or just the fact that I didn't have the mesh open and just had the uh, doors shut and all that stuff but anyway um, uh, I hate breaking down in the wet this kind of sucks so if you take a look here like I said this is substantially large I mean I can stretch my arms completely straight up and I have plenty of room plenty of headroom and actually the shape of the dome means that even scooted forward pretty much for the entire depth of the tent except for the very ends I actually have good headroom overall so no matter where I'm positioned in this tent because of the way it's shaped and the slope of the roof I have good quality headroom and I can move around easily without banging into things and that's kind of what makes this a good viable option for two people without too much difficulty now some two-person tents again being able to sort of separate out the different components would allow you to split the load between two different people if you were backpacking that's not really the case here where someone would pretty much have to carry the entire tent the other person could carry the poles and the um, stakes but uh, really uh, I don't know I'm not really convinced at this point that this is really a backpackers tent setup um, is it a car camper Eh, it's too nice to be a car camping tent. I mean, yes, of course it should be and can be, but you know, this system, I really want to have it out in the backpacking environment. It's perfect for this. I'm sitting here now, you know, with this nice vestibule keeping me nice and covered. Even if it was raining out, I could just sit here and just hang out and be completely, you know, looking outside no problem, but then covered under this vestibule. I mean, this tent in a backpacking application is beautiful. Um, it's just heavy and a little bulky, so you need to make trade-offs. I hiked in with a 57-pound pack, and this was part of it. Yeah, granted, I have all kinds of other stuff, things I need to review, and, you know, uh, you know, a little overabundance that I'm carrying also for my son. Um, but, you know, you need to make trade-offs, and a lot of times backpackers like to save weight on the big three, and the shelter system being one of them, and that would not be the case here. So at uh, a little over five pounds, um, and again with no footprint, this thing, I am curious to see how dirty and muddy the bottom of this is. Um, it, it's heavy, but it's quality, and it's actually amazingly nice. Um, so I really have to think long and hard if I'm going to use this for my backpacking application, but I know I definitely want to. So alright guys, there you have it. A real quick look at the Krua Duo. Uh, really my first go around with Krua. And I'd like to say thank you very much for Krua for the opportunity to help represent your products. I do enjoy this very much. It's an amazing product, hands down. Beautifully done, very well thought through, has a lot of excellent features and good overall quality. Um, for me, it's something that I need to continue to use and um, really experiment with, figure out where it's applicable, where the absolute best opportunity to use this is, and see if it's something that will be a long-term backpacking option for me. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. 
If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.